What's up, y'all? This is Ken Ivy. This is the Players Ball. Y'all might, y'all see the Players Ball footage, y'all might see me. This is my outfit for the night, but we got a lot of players in town. So this is the Players Ball edition, and I got a special guest, man. I mean, I've been coming to Atlanta, man, since the early 90s, 95, and maybe even 91, I think I came one time. And, man, I met this brother, you know, later on in the game, man. And man, my special guest today is my man Goldie. What's up, Goldie? Hey, say, hey, man. Thank you for having me. Man. Hey, man. Thank you for coming, man. Hey, man. How about it, man? You know, I heard you fuck with the music now. Hey, man. I've been knowing Goldie, man. I see you in the strip clubs, man. I see you around the motherfucking town, man. Right, right man. Now. You did. Hey, man. Hey, man. Check this out, though, man. You know, Atlanta got a lot of tales, man. You know what I'm saying? When All I right. first come to this motherfucking store, I was jumping, you know what I'm saying? Metropolitan and shit, you know. Shout out to my nigga Scooby, shout out to my nigga Red, shout out to my nigga uh, Sir Charles. Sir Charles called me about, about eight months ago. I talked to his son all the time, lover. So you know what I'm saying? You know, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of tied up in, you know, I mean, it's Big Silk, shout out to Big Silk, you know what right, I mean? Yeah, a lot yeah, of, you know, Gino, yeah, yeah. Cash, you know, there was a lot of players, you know, when I first pulled up in the town, you know, and, you know, we was, you know, I was still active and attractive, you know, I had a few days down, you know. And, uh, you know, Atlanta, to me, right, when I look at the ism and I look at you, you know, I know you ain't in the game. No, I look at you, you know, you give me that Atlanta flavor. You know, when I first came, you know, Scooby and Red, Atlanta Red, just shop and, you know, got your own style. You know, even like we think about Outkast and Big Boy and, you know, I mean, some of the rappers that came, look, even Titty Boy right now, uh, 2 Chain, I call him. I was just with 2 Chain. Shout out to 2 Chain. Got a new club. They got that new club down there, the Gentleman's Club, you know. Uh, he don't call it Gentleman's yeah, Club. Like uh, the Candy. The Candy, yeah, the Candy something, yeah. Candyland. Um, Candyland, I was just with two shows. So can, can you give us, for the people out there that don't know about the game in Atlanta, because Atlanta has some real big peas, can you give them a little scoop on, you know, hey, hey man, shout out to Atlanta, man. Yeah, man. Uh, see, uh, when I grew up, you know what I mean? I grew up from Techwood, you know what I mean? I'm from Techwood home. It's one of the first projects ever built in the world. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, you, you know, it was a rough neighborhood. Um, what I saw was growing up was just players, dope boys, and hustlers. You know what I mean? Uh, I took a liking to the ism. Um, you know, me and my family, you know what I'm saying, were going through a hard time, this and the other. And, you know, I always stood out, even as a youngster. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, I always stayed sharp. Uh, eight, nine years old. Wore dress clothes to school. You know what I mean? They joined me. Hey, you going to church? You going to church? Look at him going to church. But I was so clean and fresh in my own way. You did what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, so, you know, um, I took a liking into my uncle, Uncle Amos. Shout out uh, Uncle Amos. Uh, you know, he was pimping real good. Every time he came to the house, you know, back then, you, you know, they had the briefcase. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He walked around with the briefcase full of money, had uh, four or five women with him. So, um, you know, my mom's put me out. So I went over Amos' house, mm -hmm. and Amos let me stay there like for months and months and months at a time. So he was telling me, hey, nephew, come ride with me. And he was taking me down to Auburn Avenue. I think I was like 13, 14. So uh, he introduced me like to this chick, you know what I mean? And the chick gave me the game, you know what I mean? And she gave me the game on, you know what I mean, the, the dudes on the don'ts. You feel what I'm saying? So I sucked it up as a youngin', listening to what she's saying. She was grown, like 24, 25, um, and I'm watching my uncle every day, watching his move and his plays, and listening to her, because she was, you know what I mean? She, she was like, I'm going to fuck with you. I'm going to give you all of the money. So I took that game and ran with it. There's so your first bitch at 14? First bitch at 14. And then she went and knocked, her name was Martina Wise, you know what I mean? Um, and then she went and knocked another chick, so I had two, and I was 14. Hold on, let that breathe, man. We can't just... We okay, can't dig. That's so what you're 14 years old. 14. And the bitch chews up on you. Oh, chews up on you. And... So how, much, how much was the first day trap? Uh, she gave me like $1,200. And I ain't never seen... So a what did a 14-year-old nigga do with $1,200? Right. But when she gave me the money... I wasn't thinking what she was about to tell me. Soon, soon as she gave me the money, the first thing popped in my head was going to the mall, going to do this. 
go to Spring Wheels like with my partner them. Mm -hmm. But she say, no, you, you're going to take this money and then you're going to stack this money and I'm going to give you some more money. And I'm looking at her like, you know what I mean? So I'm picturing myself as my uncle. So every day that I go meet her, I'm in my uncle image. I'm listening to what he says and this and the other. So basically, for the audience that's trying to follow what's going on, right? So basically, you're saying that the bitch chose up at 14. The bitch telling you, hey, look, you know, we're going to stack this money. And your uncle, I'm pretty sure, if he pimping, you know, everything that come out of his door is instructions. So did he give you the game on like, yeah, man, you know, you know, the bitch, you know what I'm saying, is under the pimping, you know, it's pimp say, not hoe say, you know what I'm saying? Hey man, this bitch, you know what I'm saying, she can't be looking at no pimps. I mean, did he give you that? Like he gave bitch, me the is or did the bitch keep it clean and come clean and say, Hey, yeah, this how I go, Goldie. Yeah, see, once I told my uncle that she gave me the fee, he was stung. He pulled me in the room and he hollered at me. He said, the gang can get shaky. I, I know she a lot older than you is. You understand me? But she giving you the game. Now, any time that she can flip and, and the train derail, you understand me? You need to know some shit yourself. So I'm going to break it down and give you the game. So he gave me the do's and don'ts, the same thing she was. But I was on top of my shoes, you understand me? Because just like he said, if she giving you the game and then some older guy come around and knock the bitch, you feel what I'm saying? I'm out here, you know what I mean, not knowing. 14, now the bitch had to be somewhat of a cougar fuck with a 14 year old. Right. Yeah. So I'm saying, you know, because that's not normal for somebody yeah. 24 to fuck with somebody 10 years younger than them. And you're, you're, you're a young player, you know, you're a young dude getting your feet wet. So what it happened? What happens when the bitch leave? You know, how old was you when she got out on you? Because I know the bitch had to get out. Yeah, see, actually, unless you got the bitch in the uh, in in the antique shop somewhere. You did, no, 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 I mean somewhere <laughs> still posted up. Now I mean, you know, what I mean one leg up in the air, man, was encyclopedia books on the head, man. Antique ass bitch. You did. <laughs> now, man, see, uh, she had done caught a murder case on Auburn Avenue, like she stabbed somebody down okay. there. So that took her away, but. Remind you, like what I say, that she knocked another bra for me. So I stayed down with her for a good little minute, like six, seven months. And then she ended up just flipping the script, I guess, you know what I mean? You know, I was a younger. Like, but I stayed so fly, she couldn't deny. You did what I'm saying? So after she just took off, I just stayed a lock into the game. You know what I mean? I was the youngest player down on Auburn Avenue. I was 14, 15, you know what I mean? Um, around some older peas. Is you know my nigga Ray? Yeah, yeah, on the way, man, you know what I'm saying? Man. Yeah, no, no, I mean, we were used to call me Young Pimpin'. I remember I used to see yeah, Jazzy T's them days. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah. Rest yeah. in peace, man. Yeah, man, so, so. So you said 14, the other bitch stayed six months. So, like, I'm, I'm for full disclosure, you know, I know you, you know, I know my book and the book, my book, Pimp Ozzy, before they lost the game. Right. You know, my man JD give me a bitch at 16, right? Right. But, we were young, hustling and shit. So we seen the game. You know, right. my dad and I was in the game. So we had a little jump. So when the bitch Dirty Red got in my pimping, you know, I had a little bit of game. Then my nigga Star Child used to ride me around until I knocked him for a bitch named Bridget. You know, but he used to ride me around and give me the game. So you said Unc didn't give you the game until after you got the bitch, or was you already late? That's what I'm trying to. He gave me the game after I got the bitch because he just had me up on his his tail. So what was you doing before that game, man? So dope, or hustling. Now, just, just, I mean, just hustling, like okay. because because you know I'm from Tickwood, so you know what I mean. So you know, it wasn't no pimping in the hood. Right. So yeah, you know I mean, hustling. so yeah, so you know, we just hustling, just doing like. You know what I mean? Where regular young, you know what I'm saying? Young people are doing, but I always stay fresh and flat. So I always hang with the older dope dealers and shit, like in the hood. Did you see uh, all the pimping on Stewart Avenue and uh, up and down where we used to have them bitches on Peach Street by the Oh, uh, man, like I was Did down there, man. Yeah, yeah, they were down there. Uh, 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 they just oh. called me Young Chocolate City. You okay. know what I mean? Because, you know, they had Nickies. Yeah, I remember Nicky's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On, on Metro Partners? Yeah, yeah. On, on, and across the street from Nicky's was Chocolate City. Yeah, Chocolate City. Yeah, yeah. that's where Sir Charles used to be at all. Yeah, time. exactly. So, you know, that was all the peas used to hang at, like, you know, and I was the youngest cat down now. 
Then I had the, uh, I bought the Kelly like from Red. You know what I mean? Red, uh, the uh, red one? No, nah, no, nah, nah, uh, he had the first white one, the Sedanville. Yeah, it was Sedanville. And I bought that one from him, a young nigga. Mm -hmm. And they just called me Young Chocolate City because I was the first one down there and I was the last one to leave. Mm. You understand me? And I stayed down on Stewart Avenue, man. Like, we stayed on Stewart Avenue, like, you know, we had a good run down there for like 10 years straight before we moved to Peach Street Street. You know, that's when they uh, started this thing called the Vice. You know what I mean? So, uh, you know, after we mashing and crashing, um, I, I knocked so much game down there. I was the only young pimp down there. Anybody can tell you that I, was, I had 14 women, 14. And I think I was about 15 then, about, you know what I'm saying? So you got 14 deep? 14 deep. And shout out to my boy Batman. How was you, yeah, I remember Batman. You know, How was you when you was 14 deep? I think I was 15. What? Yeah, I, you know what I'm saying? I was 15 years old. I used to see and you I go, still I didn't know you was 15 deep though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 14. 14. 14 deep, and and you know I had an apartment in Tedwood, uh, and I had the girls for like two years straight, and they just called me Young Chocolate City. You understand me? And every time I went, it, like my game got so heavy, and you know what I mean, every time that I spoke, it rhymed it. It went with this one. It went with that. And like the ism, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Like the vernacular vocals that was coming out my mouth, like and when I step up on a bitch, she automatically breaking herself. I couldn't believe it. Did you get nice dresses? Yeah, and I stayed with that shit on because remember, I always stepped that shit on as a young cat, six, seven years old. You know what I mean? I always stayed, I always stayed in the suit. So I wore suits after I got with the pimping. I wore suits from my young years till I went to prison. Did you know Spec? Spec. Spectacular. Oh yeah, no spectacular. Yeah, 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 yeah. Church. That's my man. We, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, spectacular, one, my guy. That, that he one of the reasons that inspired me to come to Atlanta because me and him, me and him and Smiley and Ross and uh, Jap, all of us, we was out there in uh, D.C. and New York, you know, and uh, little dog, you know, he said he was from. Uh, that's when I met like Big from Silk. Atlanta. No, yeah, no, I, I mean. met Big Silk and Scooby and Red. You know, Red, my guy too. Red was. Yeah, Red. You no, know, so you know, you you see me on Pimp Step Holds Down, right? Yeah, for sure. I seen your game in there. You see, and, you see me on there? Yeah, I think I was incarcerated. I had got incarcerated uh, like when you did the pimps up, hose down. Okay, so you know, right after that, it was something called Really, Really Pimping in the South. Remember yeah. That? It, by Carlos. You, you see yeah, yeah, you see yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so, I mean, when you look at Pimps Up, Hose Down, and you look at the movie Really, Really Pimping in the South by Carlos, you know, with Atlanta Red and Ch Sir Charles, I mean, and Scooby. You know, I mean, how do you see Midwest pimping, which is Chicago, Milwaukee, you know, uh, Minnesota versus Atlanta pimping? Because I know y'all was more like, to me, you know, a lot of brothers, you know, Red and Scooby, y'all was more like flashy niggas had. What was them cars them niggas had then? Them, uh, uh, no, uh, well, not the Air Dorado. No, nah, them little cars with the wheels on them. Damn, man. Uh, 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 snipers. No, that shit the, was like, it was like Excaliburs though. Yeah, 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 like yeah, 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 something like that. Yeah, yeah, so, you know, and that, and you know, Scooby used to have, be flashy, Red was flashy, and you <laughs> was flashy, I remember you were young, flashy, Silk now having Rose voices. You know, it was a different, so how did you compare Pimps Up, Holes Down, and really, really Pimps Up? How would you tell people if they watch it, and you know, we're not glorifying the pimping. I just right, want people right, to right. see the culture of the game, you know what I mean, that led to, that why you do the music that you do. You know, because like I said, you know, Atlanta, in general, musically, is different. You know, y'all some good rappers. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Really, like, really, baby and Jeezy, y'all got that flavor. So, how, but the game, how do you compare the game? I know what I'm saying. I take the game as... I'm talking about the pimps over Yeah, yeah, the pimps. Really, really yeah, uh, because, you know, Atlanta always been a, a fly city. And we always just like to just... Uh, stay fresh and this and other. So when the ism appeared everywhere in the city, we made sure that we, we made sure that they know that we was pimping. And if you look <laughs> that's, at- That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> if you check this movie out and check this movie out, 
And if they asked it, you know what I mean? Like, I would tell them that the shit got to be in you and not on you. So if the Midwest, if, you know what I mean? Like, you know it's in them. So they ain't got to be with the, uh, the peach fur, the lime green mink. Uh, they just can do suits. You uh, know what I mean? No blue jeans. Mm -hmm. You understand know I me? Mean? But when you come to Atlanta, everything different. Mm, it was pink gators, blue gator, blue suit, blue brim. Mm -hmm. You did, um, yeah. Uh, I just think that Atlanta just took the effect on everything because the dress code. I yeah, mean, I mean, like I said, Scooby and Red Man, they was you know Sir Charles used to wear the captain hats back then, you know. And uh, shout out to all the brothers in Atlanta when I came, man. They really accepted me. They embraced me, man. You know, with no funny shit. You know what I mean? They respected the ism and shit, you know what I'm saying? You know, all of them fuck with me, you know that. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, so, facts. you know, man, I, I come up right, you know what I'm saying? You know, my hustle, you know, I went to jail for robbing banks and shit, robbing jewelry stores. You had 14 right. bitches. You stop pimping at 14, what you go to jail for? I went to jail for murder. Right, okay. Uh, they gave me 20 years. And remind you that every time that I talk, it wasn't like this. It was, hey, say, man. Hey, say, man. You know what I mean? Like, my vocabulary was different for years. Mm -hmm. But when I went to prison, like, hey, say, man. Hey, 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 bim, bim. Even when I'm asleep. And they call on the phone. Family member, friends, or whoever. Even, like, when I pick the phone up. Hey, say, what's happening? Who this? But after I went to prison, and... They say that they had the vice team in Atlanta because the pimping had got so strong in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. uh, Tues, Tuesdays and Thursdays, the vice used to come on the block. And they used to always come and check to see the parking lot, tell us to get down. We broke. One day I told the police lady, I'm like, did you see what we got on? What we look like laying down on the ground? You understand me? She wanted everybody just to lay down on the ground. Hey, baby, we pimping, baby. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, we ain't selling no dope. You understand I me? Mean? We smashing and crashing. You know what I, mean? I mean, so you want us to get out? Like, do you see these gators? You want us to get down with these slacks on on the ground and put our hand behind our back? No, baby. And they respected it. So they respected it so much because we were so deep on Metropolitan. Man. Like, pimping like a motherfucker. Man, like we, how, how Harry Hines is in, in uh, 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 Dallas right now. Yeah, just to see. But. The other people so didn't, I, didn't like it. Okay, let's get back to the murder, right? right? So, you went to jail for murder in the midst of some pimping? No, uh, I went to jail for murder. Uh, I had got caught up downtown. Uh, I used to hang downtown. Uh, I think I was the only pimp downtown because Atlanta had this thing at the underground. Atlanta was like, like, if you didn't want to be in your neighborhood, you go hang downtown at the underground because it's so packed. Different varieties of people come from everywhere. <laughs> That's when they first started the gangs, Crip mm -hmm. Blood. But I was the only young ism down there. So while they run around with the pans and the flags, I'm sliding around in my dress slacks, knocking the bitch. You know what I mean? And I was knocking them every day. Like when two, three leave, you know what I mean? Four, five gang, you did. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, so you know, some cats tried to snatch my bag and remind you I'm from Tigwood. So when they see me down there dressed up, they try me. Oh, come on, why, 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 give me this. Now what I mean, boom, 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 boom. And I let off, knocked them down, know what I mean? And they gave me 20 years, um, I did seven, um, playing mental health, know what I mean? Free me, thank you God. Know what yeah. I mean? I always bless them, you know, know what I mean? Like the most high. I'm pretty sure in those seven years, that's where you developed some of your rap skills, right? Once I got there, it wasn't, it wasn't no one talking like me. Know what I mean? You know, prison, different. So when you go in there, know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, prison can teach you to be a man. Know what I mean? And it can tell who you really are, if you're a lame or if you're a sucker. You understand me? So I had to go stand on my 10 toes, you understand me? And just let them know, you know what I mean? I'm a Woody, you know what I mean? I'm a G, you understand me? So that went like, like my tone and the, and the way I spoke just like, like faded away a little, you know what I mean? So 
then that's how I talk like this now. And it been like that, it was, you know what I'm saying? It was since I got in prison. Okay, so you wrote music while you was in jail? Yeah, um, I got this thing like for music, man, be, uh, because that's all that we had to do. If we ain't writing letters, doing this, playing mental health, or uh, however you do in chain gang, uh, I found, you know what I'm saying, rap there, you know what I mean? Uh, coach my time, you know what I mean? So I was so good with words. Uh, when they rapping about this and that, the guns and this one, I say, oh, soon we come from child, I'm finna get these folks pimping. Cause ain't nobody in China ain't talking about pimping. Right. Ain't nobody talking about the game. Ain't nobody talking about breaking the bitch. Ain't so nobody like- in you, not on you. Man, she was in my, not on me. So once I went to it, I laid it on them. And then they sh shifted. They went and knocked on my room every day. Hey man, we wanna hear some pimping. We wanna hear some pimping, man. Because everybody else talking about shoot them up, bang, bang. You understand me? I'm coming in the crowd where, you know, we beating on the table. And, and I'm talking straight lacing, no chasing. Round down Broadway one day, bumped to the whole name no leader. Picked up my two seat. I told the bitch I'd be the mistreated she ever had some pimp beater. You understand me? And man, they loved it. So, okay, seven years, we out of jail now. You know what I'm saying? Uh, did you get right back in the ism? And then, wait, now here's the trick question. Okay, right. Did you get back in the ism? And how did the ism and the rap game affect you when we know that niggas be like, it's straight lace, no chase, man, it's all on the bitch, you know what I'm saying? I mean, cause see, I give you my, I use myself for example. Uh, you know, after I won International Pimp of the Year, Pimp of the Year, I won all the trophies, I transitioned, right? Cause life is a collection of transition, you know, we like a transmission, you can switch gear. So I switched gears on them and I started selling DVDs out the trunk. And niggas was like, ah, nigga, yeah. I said, nigga, the DVD is the bitch. This bitch yeah, don't argue, she bitch don't fight. Y'all I mean. can't knock this bitch. You, did. you know what I'm saying? I had fun, man. I made a lot of money. I checked a lot of money selling DVD. So nigga was like, yeah, man. And I said, no, I, I, I asked one nigga, man. One nigga, he was like, man, Ken, man, you was one of the greatest, man. Why would you do this, man? You know, niggas is looking at you funny. I said, man, let me ask you a question, right? right. I said, you niggas keep saying that it's all on the bitch, wow. right? But 99 percentile of you motherfuckers, right? When y'all can't pimp on the bitch no more, you niggas either be windos, you niggas be uh, motherfucking crackheads, like straight dogs, you niggas man. go to prison, or you niggas just straight die. A horrible life. Right. Why are you gonna put a restriction on my pimp and nigga tell me that it's all on the bitch, man? Well, I'm gonna turn these hoes in into dividends. That's why one of my chapters in my book turned the hoes right. into dividends. So that's how I looked at it. So what was your way of looking at it? Mine looked at it when I got out of prison, uh, they smashed in Atlanta. They had Atlanta on hoax. It wasn't no more Peachtree Street. It wasn't no more Metropolitan. They was working strip club. When I was fresh out, you know, I was in, locked over so long, like, you, like, you know, I could have just run into a pimp, run into a player. Now the game switched up. What I did to myself, I say I'm just gonna focus on the music. You understand know I me? Mean? Like, you know, that was my transition, you understand know I me, mean? to to respect the game, because you gotta respect the game. Right. And I respect the game so much that I had to keep it in me. Uh, and I couldn't go back to the ism, you understand know I me? Mean? So I put it on a pen and a pad, you understand know I me? Mean? And that's where I made that the first song that's where they do that at. Where they do that. So, so when you first ever got knocked, what, what was that like? I mean, did, you, did somebody call you or did you meet the nigga on the blade? I mean, when you first oh, got man. knocked for your first bitch. You know, when Martina went to prison and remind you back, you know what I'm saying? Like she, when she gave me the other bitch, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And the bitch left and I got that phone call. I didn't know how to take it, you understand me? But then I remember my uncle Amos telling me, when you in this game, young nigga, you understand me? You can't have no conscience. You know what I mean? Like, you gotta, you know what I mean? Like, this shit is like hard dirt brick, you understand me? Your heart gotta be cold as ice water. You understand me? So, when I got that call, and it tripped me out because the dude say, hey, I'm calling you to tell you, you understand me, that she say that you told her to get a thousand dollars out the street, you understand me? I'm finna come bring you that thousand dollars, and I got your bitch. So, 
with me first time just getting knocked. I didn't, know what I mean? Like when he's saying, hold on, you gonna bring my bitch? And then she been with me through the hotels, you know what I mean? I don't been to her house, you know what I mean? My, I'm a young nigga, so I'm going to the house, you know what I mean? Like she come to my house, so, 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 so. You know, if you got 14 bitches, which one of them get the wood first? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm just, this is square question. Right, 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 right. I'm just, I'm yeah, 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 no, 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 no. Be See, me, I didn't never had sex with none of them because Uncle always told me not to, which I wanted to because I'm a young whooper snap. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I always had a lot of hoes, you understand me? Before I was, you know what I mean, like working the one and the two. Mm -hmm. And, and, but when he told me that you can't, Fuck none of them because they feelings get involved. You don't want your feelings getting involved. You can't have no conscious in this shit. You understand me? And then if I did choose to fuck, make sure that I wore a rubber. You understand me? That stayed in my pocket. But I never not want them. I know what I'm saying. I never want to fuck you, none of them. I mean, you never fuck none of your whole career. You know what I'm saying? I, you know what I'm saying? It was strictly. In the whole career, your whole career? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But so, 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 I was just saying, my, my like point, 14, though, I was just saying. My point now, okay, let's, let's take you up to speed. You're a veteran pimp now. Indeed, you know, this you no longer 14, you're of oh, age. Okay, so, okay. If, you had, if you had five bitches, which bitch, get the, which bitch get the wood? The bottom bitch? The new bitch, the bitch in the middle, I mean, I'm just asking questions. It would be the bitch that don't stay down that that I know her loyalty. So what if she acting like a faggot bitch and she trying to run the new hoses off? I mean, do you still give the bitch the wood? Uh, and do you consider a faggot bitch being a faggot? And ladies and gentlemen, this is how we talk, you know. It's not no, no, we just try to give y'all some understanding. Or, or, or out of pocket chick, right? You know what I'm saying, me being out of pocket, do you still give her the wood? I would give it a wood because for the simple fact we would have some understanding before I lay down with her. You understand me? Um, Cause it's not about the fun, it's about the funds. Mm -hmm. You understand? So she would have that understanding in, you know what I'm saying, already in her head before she even tripped. You understand me? And I know the bitch can get dick whipped. You understand me? Mm -hmm. And then once I knock four, five bitches, you know what I'm saying? And she's my main and she's dick whipped, she can get a bit jealous. You understand me? She can run the hoes off. That's what they still do to this day. I don't think bitches really get dick whipped. And I'm not saying right, in that, right, in that right, respect. Right. I think these bitches, man, be more emotional. They be caught up in the emotions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These dudes, man, turn 100, 200, 300 days a week. You know what I'm right. saying? Bitch can't, dick can't be the reason, man. It's got right. to be, you know, it ain't the peasing. It's got to be another reason. It's got to be this bitch is just, you know, selfish, you know what I'm saying? Me and the bitch have Thanks. abandonment issues, you know? And she want to just be all, you know, to herself. And she don't want nigga to get no money. She want nigga to rise up out the ashes, you know what I'm saying? Really, you know, have some uh, some real shit in this game. Yeah, like, know? that can play a part of it, you know what I'm saying? Because women are born emotional, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, they're, you know what I mean? Like, you know, that's in them. And, but you can be able to peep, like me, myself, a sense I never, you know what I mean? Like, I always stay not dick with the bitch. You know what I mean? I fucking, you know, with my big head, not with my little head. Right. You understand me? So, with me knowing that, I already know if I put this wood on her and she get to acting like that, I got to know myself that I need to get her the game before we even get to hold the hands. We hug and I share a game and she tell me about her life and then we make it better. You understand me? Like, that's why I spread the game. So, you so it, like... Out of, man, I don't know how many bitches I had, but out of all the bitches <laughs> I had, man, in my career, right? Because it is a career, right? Right. Man, that damn one of them hoes, I mean, all the hoes was like, Daddy, I can do what all these bitches doing. Daddy, I just want to be me and you. I don't know if it's just me, you know what I'm right. saying? And, and I, I, I'm not gonna say, you know, I, I know I wasn't dishing out wood like that, so I know I wasn't the wood, I wasn't the cockmaster. So you know what I'm saying? It wasn't all about, you know, fucking the bitches and shit. So I mean, but I just kept attracting this energy, man. I was like, everybody want me to be, you know, theirs, just, like, just like, you know what I'm saying? Like they trophy. Yeah. And then, and so and you then if you need suit, yeah, 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 man, like no lie, no cap, you understand me? But, but I always knew that when they act like that, it's something that you will see. 
know what I mean? You know what I mean? If it's an eye cock, you know what I mean? Is it a way that they hand you a glass? You know what I mean? Like, you got to be so sharp. And you can't be a square, you know what I mean? So, so when people get into this game, you know what I mean? Like, it's easy, but it's hard, you know what I mean? Because you got to know, like, you got to so have what, the wisdom. What did, what did you do to deal with that situation? Like, I often tell motherfuckers, right? Police man, kill a motherfucker, right? He go home, wife cook him breakfast. It's his motherfucking job. Fireman, he goes into burning houses and shit, with big ass hammers and jack hammers and shit. You know, he pull a motherfucker out of the fire, motherfucker burn half to death. He go home, eat motherfucking Cheerios and Frosted Flakes. Hey man, listen man, you know, we were pimps. So you know what I'm saying? I mean, we couldn't have no sympathy. Like right. I said, I, I went to the doctor, had a triple bypass, I had all the sympathy move on my heart. So that was how I dealt with the situation these hoes talking about. So, hey man, I just want to be your main bitch. Hey man, you know what I'm saying? I just gave you 40,000. Hey man, woo woo woo. And I'm like, say bitch, ain't no different than the in pocket bitch, out of pocket bitch. Hey bitch, you know what I'm saying? Me, you got 20,000, bitch, you left something on the floor, bitch. Yo, go get some motherfucking Go get some more. You know what I'm saying? Me? And that was just how I was. And a lot of my pimp partners, you said, Ken, you ain't never loved them, no bitches? No, man, I ain't had no love. Love, like, to me, it's like, a full letter world, like fucking shit, so fuck that shit. So I'm exactly. saying, what well, was how you deal with it? That's, that's how, how I deal with it. How did you right. deal with it? Man, know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, I'm, I'm talking about, about the, 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 the Goldie. I just want to be me and you. Goldie, you know what I'm saying? Me, I love you, Pippin. Goldie, you know what I'm saying? I'll do anything for you. you I mean, how did you do Because you know, that's some sucker shit. Right. But you know it's a test because you're in the game. How right. did you deal with it? And then shit? some of it can be a test because they can just be trying you. You understand me? So you got to look at the try and you got to look at the attach. Like she's just trying to be selfish, just like you said. But me, I let her know off rip. It don't matter if you bring me three million at night. I'm going to play like I don't even see you. And if you try to attach my game, you understand me? I'm going to put more pressure on you in the game. Like if you say that you don't want me to have these other three hoes that don't knock. And you telling me that you can make what five hoes make. You understand me? I'm not falling down for it. You understand me? Because the game's so strong. You understand me? So when so she's just solid, solid on the bitch. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean so, because so it now, came from Now here's me. another question, right? Now this is the flip side of that question, right? Have you ever just looked at a bitch and the bitch was just so down and she was just, you know, whatever. You're like, damn, man, I've been hard on these hoes for 10, 20 years, man. Maybe this bitch might be the one that can retire my pimping. You know what I'm saying? Have you ever had a bitch like, man, man, this bitch can, can do something together? Yeah. And I'm, I'm saying that for a reason. I, I got a follow-up question. Uh, yes, I did. Me too. You understand me? And actually it was twice. The one that gave me the game, after um, you understand me, but she caught the murder case and mm -hmm. she went on up the road. And I was like, damn. And I always thought about her. You know what I mean? And time like that, I meet a man, you understand me? And I can peep her loyalty. Um, I thought about it. And, and, but then I look back on the game and say, hey man, I don't want to keep her next to me and then say that she's my main and she end up flipping the script. Because sometimes these women get emotional and then they can be solid for two years straight and then they'll do something out of ordinary that you don't even know that she done. Know what I mean? Like she'll do something monkey. Know what I mean? So like, a bitch could be with a nigga for 10 years, right? And she really paying the nigga pimping, but on the low, she's a fucking hater, right? So she's trying to run all the other hoes out. And, and these bitches, you like, man, where all these bitches disappearing like magic tricks? God damn, man. I mean, this bitch just had dinner. And, I, you know, I gave the bitch, you know what I'm saying, interview. And the bitch was really liking my pimping. And all of a sudden, this bitch didn't got out, man. I mean, you know, where is all this coming from? You know what I'm saying? I mean, and it be that bitch, right? And the book on what a bitch going to do have been written yet. It be that very bitch that you thought, man, this bitch might be the one, right? You know what I'm saying? This bitch been down with my pimp and be the one that's been running all the hoes off. Exactly. I I only had that happen once, but 
because as a youngin, I already knew, you understand me, that I had to stay silent, whichever one that I knew that was stand down with me the longest. And if I felt that one didn't like the other, you understand me, I separate them. Um, but I never got that though, because my game always been so immaculate, you understand Can I ask you a question? Yes, sir. So did you ever have a bitch have, tell another bitch, hey, do this, do this, do that. And you know the bitch know that that wasn't your program, but she was leading the bitch astray because she wanted to get the bitch a bad rep and you're pimping and you're like, oh, okay, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, this bitch is a faggot, this bitch ain't stand up with the bitch that you know you left with the bitch, this bitch is really doing the fag shit. And I'm actually that because it's like, and yo, you gave a good answer, but it's like Goldie, like for real, for real, right? right. You know, know some right? Yeah, yeah, man, yeah. these hoes, man, they ain't yeah, man. no motherfucking good, man. <laughs> nah, I mean, man. and I tell motherfuckers that, man, they think, you know, like even when you know a bitch chews up, they say, oh, he got this young lady out here, you know, he's 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 forcing her against her will. No, even though the bitch didn't see three ambulances, four police cars, the, the National Guard, the Army, and the Marine, and she asked, now one of them save her for pit, man. You know what I mean? She's here on her own accord. But a lot of times, man, I know you might have a different perspective than me, but a lot of times what I've learned in my 40 some years career in this shit, man, I learned that all these hoes, man, you know, were actually challenges. They was challenging the pimping. They was trying to break the pimping down. They was trying to see a weakness. You know what I'm saying? I mean, all that nice shit, all that money shit, all that shit, a lot of times that shit was a form of weakness. And it's only the niggas that stood on their business, right? That really stood on all 10, that really made it in the game and had a had a successful retirement. But you know, I had some of the greatest pimps of all times, man. This no bullshit, Goldie. I mean, like, we all know them, Super Bowl niggas. Right. You know, call me like, yeah, Ken, I'm finna marry this bitch, right? I said, man, good luck with that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, you know, I, I encourage that, you know, if that's what you want to do. But then the same niggas, right? Man, this bitch spazzed out. This bitch just spazzed out on me, man. This bitch tripping. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I had to revert back to the pimping because this bitch wasn't respected. She wasn't accepting my instructions anymore. So that's why I think, and a lot of hoes out there, which a lot of y'all renegades, any, renegades anyway, so it ain't gonna make a difference. You know what I'm saying? A lot of hoes say, well, you know, Ken, you know what I'm saying? Me, you shouldn't say that, you know, because I'm a stand up bitch. And I tell the bitches, I said, listen, man, ain't now one of y'all is going to allow that man to square up. You cannot turn a hoe into a housewife. And then, 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 then one of y'all is going to respect that man if he do anything that's unpicked. Out the ordinary. And, you know, so, so, so. And people don't understand that. And that's why we say, until the bitch get out the game, the bitch belongs to the pimp community. Because it ain't a nigga that I, 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 me personally, I didn't knock all the Super Bowl niggas. I was serving them niggas like, you know, like, yeah, left and right. Like, yeah, it was, yeah. What they call it, the Jimmy Keys Teletime. I was on the Teletime. Yeah, but you know, yeah, yeah, man, but you know. Man, um, I know what. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. Women will do that. And then for the simple fact, if, you know what I'm saying? Like, they would, like, they'll throw a rock and hide their hand. Mm -hmm. They'll go in the kitchen, like, you don't knock the, know the bra, but you've been down with her six years, right? You just met her two weeks ago, right? And she can go in there and just, Manipulate the situation with her to have her to do something fucked up to just to come back in now and watch you and watch the pimp and then see is he gonna treat her any different that 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 he used to be doing with her. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So she can put something on her and say, hey, I thought you were gonna get nine thousand a night and you just got eighty five hundred. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, but you got down my throat. But you got the new bitch over here, young you understand me? Like she said she gonna get twenty five hundred a night and she just brought a thousand and then you didn't say nothing then to her. Watch this here though, right? How many times had that new bitch, right, got that nine thousand, that other bitch had a bad day? She couldn't break it. She only got 5,000. And the new bitch jump in the motherfucking seat of the Benz, the front seat. 
and that bitch in the back. That's cold. So that's why I'm saying. And then that's, that's why that's I what legitimately they'll... say that the book on what a bitch going to do have been written yet. That can't no nigga diagnose a bitch. It's Period. impossible. It's impossible. And I know y'all probably wonder why we keep talking about the Pippin because this guy, he started at 14. I've been knowing him for years, you know, and I just want him to explain, you know, the difference because a lot of y'all be asking me questions now. That's why I got this show, A View from the Game. Y'all just don't get my view. Y'all get somebody else's view that that changes life. So, don't so, 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 so we're going we to segue from the Pippin right. and go into the music. So I, I just heard you. At the onset of this interview, man, that motherfucking shit was cold. Hey, say, man, appreciate it, man. You know what I'm saying? Actually, like that track was produced by uh, Charles Gray. You know what I'm saying? Uh, R.I.P. Charlotte Low. He used to do uh, Charlotte Low album. Um, he did some shit from Future. Uh, yeah, and then, like, as soon as he played that track, man, and I heard them horns, and I, man, like, the only thing, like, that I thought about, uh, you know what I mean, um, with, like, Harlem Nights. You know what I mean? Like, with all the horns and shit. It, you dig? So I just went in there and just told them folk, man, you know what I mean? Part of my pimping, man, excuse my French. You understand me? Yeah, man. So, you know, uh, I got that on my single. I got this album coming out called Pete Lana. You understand me? And uh, with that, what I'm doing is I'm actually getting all the P's, man, and all the players, man, you know what I'm saying, that's not, you know what I'm saying, active in the ism. You know what I'm saying? But putting it down like in the music, you know what I mean? Or like whatever they doing, they sports betting. You understand me? If if uh, some peas don't turn to some preachers, you know what I mean? Uh, but if they dealing with the music, I try to put them together because this is Atlanta. And Atlanta don't win AY. So I'm, you know what I mean? I'm hoping that I can save the game so, in my city. So, so, so a lot of people, uh, I was talking to Rooster. Right. They call, call it, it pimp hop now. You know what, what I'm saying? saying? And uh, for for the viewers out there, you know, people rap about killing, they talk about drug dealing, they talk about all this drilling, all this shit. So, you know, that's art imitating life. You know, Rollo the Pimp, Silky Slim, all these brothers rapping and stuff like that. All they're doing is giving you art. You know, they, they it's an artist, artistic expression from the lifestyle that they once lived. You know, and Goldie, man, it's good, man, that you, you know, you into the pimp hop and, you know, you bring us that, that Atlanta flavor from another perspective. Because, you know, I can hear your music, right? And I can hear Lil Baby, 21 Savage, but I hear instead of the, the crazy shit, you know, that they rap about, I hear the pimping. You know, but I still hear that Atlanta slang and that Atlanta twang, you know, and man, you, you're doing a good job. Man, I sure appreciate it, man, because I grew up off Outkast, Good Em Up, you, uh, you understand me, uh, Eight Ball, MJG, you know what I mean? And then I always just thought, man, look at man, if you real, you understand me, like you don't need to boast it, you understand me? Like, you know, a real nigga ain't just being old that, you know, I can go grab the sticks. I can, you know what I'm saying, I can do this. Because a gangster don't speak, period. A gangster don't say nothing. You understand me? So when you uh, hula hopping about this and that one, man, you ain't doing nothing but crashing. You know what I mean? Because, like, you might got a little duckies, but if you already ain't got this up here, you understand me? You blowing your money, and soon you crash out on the case. Hey, man, the only thing that you do is call your family. Ain't got no money stashed in no box. You know what I mean? Like, you ain't thinking, but if I give you the ism, you understand know I me? Mean? Like, through my music, I'm teaching you. I'm showing you this way you can be done. I'm speaking of get you some bitches with some good credit scores. You understand know, you know I me? Mean? Get you a bright one. You know what I mean? If you ain't got the bright one, you got the right one. You know I mean? uh, so that's where I try to put in my music. You understand know I me? Mean? The ism. So then, hey man, it can change the culture, man. It can change the game. Like they say, pimping ain't dead. The gold of the done you is the lifeline. I got one daughter. If you could look at that camera right there, what would you tell your daughter? Hey man, I would just tell her, you understand me? Stay sharp, stay focused, you understand me? I changed my life because of you. You understand me? I know that you're someone and you're going to be someone. And your dad done threw the towel in on everything, you understand me? But the game. And I'm speaking my knowledge, wisdom, understanding, you understand me? So I can do this for us. 
So for a young dude out there watching you, right. you see the, you know, the AP, you see the, you know, the Cuban links, you know what I'm saying? The Versace glasses. What's those Versace's? No, Louis Vuitton. Louis Vuitton, you know, I, I mean, I'm, I'm looking. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah, 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 Pippin Ken and uh, my distinguished guest today, uh, Goldie. Is it Mac Goldie, Pimp Goldie, or just Goldie? Hey, uh, it's Goldie the Don. It was Goldie, Don. Goldie Mac, but it was a million Goldie Macs in the world, so I had to change it to Goldie the Don. So can yes, you tell them where to find you? Oh, uh, man, you can find me at on all digital platforms as The Real Atlanta. Not the, but the, D-A, Real Atlanta, not the bootleg one. You understand me? And, uh, yeah, yeah, man. So, the real Atlanta, go to the done. Hey, man, P Atlanta on the way. P University. You understand me? I got my clothing brand. My daughter's name is New Era Cortai. You understand me? Her mom's German. My daughter's German. You understand me? And I got the big clothing line that's going crazy called New Era Cortai. Y'all make sure y'all go to the website. Y'all grab the clothing line. It's some good game. You understand me? Cortai. It's French. Hey, man. And there you have it, man. You understand me? Man, thanks for coming, baby. Hey, man, it's a pleasure for having me, baby. All right. Get traffic. Ted Ken out there, met the ball. Okay, okay. I'm going to get your number from G Gun, my dollar. Yeah, much love. For sure, man. Love, Turk. Shirts out here. Yeah, you, with see, the P's. you see little P out here. Yeah, with the biggest P of the P's, man. The biggest of the biggest, man. You hear me? Yeah, what's going on, man? Yeah, with the big church, man. Yeah, you're going to live in the ATL. What's going on, man? It's Young Free, man. Yeah, with the OG. Yeah, man, a boss medic at the HHS shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like co op. That's that co op. See, Pimp McKen was in here earlier, and he put the pimp spirit in the air. Give me, give me some gangster shit. Just go get the book where they come out. I'm out. Best book in the country. Best selling book in the country, period. Right. This book right here, Pimp McKen laid it on me. My God. <laughs> Cross the tracks, man. Now, now, let's talk about this book. And Ken is the homie. He, he a legend, he a legend. Book. I fuck with Ken Stevo. Uh -huh. They came to me with, you know, Simon Schuster. Boss me, you the shot caller. When you write a book about somebody, it's about what they been through. I saw my first nigga get killed. I was, yeah. I was dying. I was at school, nigga was trying to bring me 17 pounds. And I got cancer. With and my auntie, Keisha died. She ain't died. Everybody was dying. I ain't, I ain't think I was gonna make it. Me and Revy never hung out together. That's what this book uh, the world don't know. We never been in the streets together. Master P was in their heyday. They came, they moved to Baton Rouge. So I saw these dudes all the time. Matter of fact, I broke them on the dick girl car. When I saw how big they was, all these niggas riding around in big trucks. I showed like 1200. And I got a pocket full of money. I went and got play up, dog. I went and got fresh every day. I was thug Every week I was on some shit. Fight, shootouts. Peace. Hey, how you doing? This is James C.B. Gray, president and national spokesperson for the hip-hop fraternity. Thank you for watching the trailer of the making of an autobiography of a celebrity featuring